So we're here at IFA 2013 uh, at the Panasonic booth. So who are you? Hi, my name is Tamar Stern. I'm a technical product manager for Panasonic Marketing Europe. And I'm here to answer the questions about our newest product. This is the Lumix GX7. So this is the first time it's uh, shown somehow. Well, no, it's not the lounge, but this is the first time actually people can get their hands on the product, um, which a lot of people really enjoy. And it's a pleasure to see how, how people stop and be like, oh, you already have GX7, can I please see it? So yes, it's the first time you can touch it. So are people as excited about this one as the GH3? Or why, why is, this, is this special? Oh, it is special. It's, it's, it's pretty much uh, a rev high level of excitement. It's, of course, it's directed at a whole different audience than GH3. GX7, uh, as you already uh, discovered, flat type, and you've already shown the uh, tiltable viewfinder, it appeals to uh, a co completely different customer. Uh, this camera is, as you can see, a pretty classical style, but we don't say retro. We would go as far as to say neo-retro, because this is just like a very, very good um, um, inclusion of both concepts. It shows the old virtues. It shows things that people associate with classical photography. It has the classical wheels. It has all the classical modes. Of course, especially the silver one has a quite classical look. But this is filled with the newest technology. So that's the reason we don't call retro, because this is not old. This is innovative, and this is like a state-of-the-art product. So this one looks uh, like my father's uh, Leica, kind of. Uh, so is it, does it weigh the same? Does it feel the same? Is it the same leathers and stuff? Or is that how they decide to make it? Or Well, um, actually, they decided to make it this way with a lot of different people in mind. Of course, there's the ones who appreciate the classical look. There is the ones coming from analog photography, working with heritage lenses like Leica, Folklander, whatever you want to call it. You can adapt most of these lenses almost everything about adapters and you can use them with a classical style you can use the camera wholly manually and it will be supportive like if you want to use um, a classical lens on this and adapt it and you have a manual focus lens this camera will be very supportive I can show you that turning the camera to manual focus mode you can enlarge the area you want to focus upon let me find just something to focus on like this and you can enlarge and as you can already see the blue thing is flashing that's our focus peaking so if you focus the enlargement will help you and even furthermore the focus peaking will show you exactly where your focus is at and how much it extends yeah? and then you can take your picture and it will be in absolute focus and this will work um, with any lens so now I have a modern Panasonic lens on it that I just turned to manual but regardless which lens I put on here, being at 150 years old, and regardless of what aperture I turn on, I can still have those two tools. I can have enlargement and I have peaking. So it's made for adapting old lenses or focusing totally ma uh, automatic. It's your choice. It appeals to all kinds of people. It appeals to the old school, I do everything by myself a manual. And at the same time, it's a great companion for people loving and appreciating automatics, starting off or stepping up, it doesn't matter. So is this, uh, this is Micro Four Thirds? This is Micro Four Thirds. So how does it compare with the GH3, the quality? Um, it's a better, slightly better uh, still image quality. The GX7 has a completely new sensor. It has the same pixel count, it's 16 megapixels as well, but it's a completely new developed sensor. It has a higher saturation, meaning this will translate into better dynamic range, meaning a better contrast, better black and white, if you have scenes with a lot of contrast, like a silhouette in front of a sky, you will be able to handle this a little bit better. It has more potential. It so has a even though it's smaller, it can, it's actually better for still? Yeah. The size of the camera has nothing to do with image quality whatsoever. Really? really? So you don't need a bigger optical chamber or whatever it's called? No, that's the beauty of mirrorless. You, you don't need a big optical chamber at all. So uh, it's the potential of the lenses, it's the potential of each pixel in the sensor, and it not at le last but not least, it's the potential of what you make out of your signal, out of your, of your image, how you process it. And of course, this is state of the art, it's a brand new sensor, improved sensor, it's great optics, and of course, improved engine. So the Venus engine in here uh, makes the best out of the signal. So of course, as this is a very much newer product, uh, it's the better product. So. Uh why is the GH3 bigger? 
because of it's as I said earlier, it appeals to a completely different uh, user group. I wish you had told me I would have brought GH. Yeah. GH is uh, made to fit a big hand. It's made to be built into rigs for video filming. It's made really rigid. It's sturdy. It's sealed. It's made for people going out in the wild. And this is going to be uh, like your discreet companion. If you want to go out on a city, you want to do some street photography, just enjoy having a little tool with a great image potential. This is what you're made of. So it appeals to a completely different customer. It's not a competitor. It's an addition. That's the beauty. We have totally different lines appealing to totally different user groups. So is it, it's not weather sealed? This is not weather sealed. It's not it's, splash proof or something? No. This is very sturdy but lightweight. So we didn't want to make this bulky, we wanted to make this rigid, but on an elegant way. So this body is completely magnesium based, yeah? okay. and uh, of course it has rubberized um, uh, areas to be really fitting your hand. I don't know, what do you like about the, do you like how it fits? It's cool. See? Yeah, but, but we I didn't have a huge hand. Yeah, and you, have a and you still think it's cool. Yeah, but is so it possible to add something to make it like even bigger grip? No. Oh, we don't offer something like that yet. Yeah. But never say never, and uh, I think I have big hands for Owen. Mm -hmm. I think it fits perfectly, and it's designed to be as big as you need it, but as discreet as possible. So we try to fit, find the perfect fit. So, I think so definitely, this is the best picture quality from Panasonic. Yes, today. and more. For sure. It's the best picture quality from Panasonic. And I would go as far as to say it's one of the best cameras out there in terms of in image the world. quality. In it terms of image quality, it's one of the best models there are. So this is 1,000 euro. Is so it, please test it. Is it kind of better as a 3,500 euro uh, Canon or Nikon? You know, it really depends on what you want to use it for. First of all, this doesn't want to compete with a 3,500 euro model. It doesn't want yeah. to compete with that. It's a 1,000 euro product, but still, Personally, it always depends on what you want to use it for. If you want to use it for street star photography as a spontaneous, reliable companion, this will beat the big and bulky three and a half thousand euro product. My opinion. So, but it's definitely the best one thousand euro product in the world. I would say yes. That's pretty like. Uh, That's comp bold. <laughs> com competing with Sony's. They're doing some lots of uh, compact stuff right now. Everybody is kind of right. Uh, why is everybody moving to flatter stuff? I don't understand. This is the time of uh, moving towards uh, kind of like micro four thirds. Uh, it's like new technology enabling this compared to uh, DSLR. Uh, it wasn't possible three years ago to That's do true. as good micro four thirds. So well, we're arriving at some point of. Uh, well, it was possible with micro four thirds. That's the point. That's the point everyone's changing now, because we don't need to drive around in a 50-year-old car if you can drive a modern car that is less fuel-consuming. It's kind of like this is. You don't need a mirror chamber anymore, because you don't need to feed an optical viewfinder. Plus, there are people who still appreciate it, and it's a matter of taste. But if you don't need an optical viewfinder, and it's not your taste, the electronic viewfinder has so much advantages. Yeah? And we have such a great panel. And when you decide for the uh, mirrorless, so for the, for the um, electronic viewfinder, you can get rid of all that bulk, of all that mechanics, of all that analog legacy. You don't need it anymore. That's the reason you can work with contrast autofocus. That's the reason you can work with live view autofocus. That's the reason you can continuously focus in video mode. All this is made posi uh, possible by a digital design. So why stick in the old world like you can go in the new? So now there's a micro display in here uh, showing digital info. There's no analog going through. That's, That's what correct. it means. That's correct. You have the same signal that is on the sensor all the time, live, in the viewfinder and on the display. It's the same signal that's on the sensor. No delays. Micro, micro delays maybe. No, micro, micro delays maybe, yeah, yes. But no try it for yeah. yourself. I mean, it's an electronic transfer, so yes, there will be measurable delays. But as you said, micro, micro delays. Everyone has to decide what they want, but yeah. please try. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> So, how is video on this product? This is not emphasized to be a video product. It has full HD, it has 50 or 60p, depending on region, and it has AVC HD 2, so it has 28 megabits. But 
as this is not, and it has a similar image quality in a moving picture as the GH3. But the GH3 still is our hero for, for moving images. So uh, while the GH3 can do 72 Mbit, this can't. And it's not supposed to do. Couldn't it do it? It's not like uh, the hardware could, but it's just not enabled? It's not intended to do it. That's the okay. point. This is not going to be the video shooter. It can do video very well. And of course, when you want to have uh, stabilized videos, you attach the modern HD uh, OIS lenses, and you will have stabilized video, and it's very good quality. But this is not going to be the big data buster. There's a it's not made mini for jack input. No. There's no mini jack. There's no mini jack input. input. So you have to use the microphone that's here. Yeah. Uh, and this this slot is not a digital microphone input or something. No. Okay, it's just for flash. Yes. Okay. All right. So. Uh, there's some uh, photographers been trying it out and uh, those are for sure they know what they're talking about and they say it's good right yes so uh, the nice thing about the assignment you're talking about yeah. uh, we have partnered up with Magnum we have uh, given Ian Barry and Thomas Dvorak uh, both two Magnum photographers uh, one of the very early samples much earlier than these of GX7 and told them you know you have an assignment you want to do, take this camera. We didn't give them any introduction. We didn't give them any, like a manual saying, please try this, please try that. We just let them go. And they did their assignment using our product. So I can recommend just, yeah, they are here. You can watch them on stage oh, yeah. and they're talking about their experiences and you can see the pictures they took. And uh, yeah, they have to speak for themselves. But uh, from what I've heard, they've been quite happy. All right, so analog is finished. Uh, this is the best of digital world for at least that category of consumers and users. Uh, so how is it made? It's made in, uh, by Panasonic engineers in Japan. How do they, you said there's a whole new sensor compared to GH3, which is just a few months ago, but what happens? How do they make it work? Uh, it's gonna be amazing how, how they, um, do all the R and D and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we have uh, as Panasonic Corporation, we're just like one of the biggest electronic corporations in this world. And uh, of course, we have a department for semiconductor, and we've been working together with them. And they—that's what they do. They develop semiconductors and sensors, and they made this sensor for this camera. And uh, it's a different different factory than the factory where actually where the camera is built. But all is made in Japan. And if you look at the um, like at the lens plant that we have in Yamagata, they have, we have a big factory. And it's, it's very impressive when you go in there and go through and you see the state-of-the-art technology. It amazes me when they do lenses. You know, some lenses need very small parts. And uh, modern lens design involves sophisticated lens shapes. And if you want to uh, form a lens, mold a lens, shape a lens that has an inside diameter of less than one millimeter, and outside diameters of a few millimeters. That's a huge difference. In manufacturing that requires a lot of skill. So we have state-of-the-art technology, we have state-of-the-art machines, but, and that's important to me, because I think that's part of the heritage of photography. We have people working there with a lot of skill and a lot of knowledge who uh, put things together. And if you go to the lens lines, some of the lens lines, you go to the end and you look how the first lenses are made, and you see all the layouts, and in the end you have a person packaging the rest and giving it the final finish. That's like really the human touch to each lens. That's really fascinating to me. And yes, that's all been done in Japan. So, uh, am I totally wrong? Maybe I'm ignorant, but uh, Panasonic entered aggressively the Lumix area just a few years ago, right? Before, there wasn't so many Panasonic cameras? No, I think not you're not true. correct. Not true. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We've actually started with cameras long, long, long time ago. We've produced cameras longer than there is a Lumix brand. Many cameras are made by different partners. And Panasonic has made cameras for different partners longer before the Lumix, the Lumix name was there. But we have been making Lumix cameras for uh, over 10 years now. And we've started with Lumix G, interchangeable lens in 2008. So basically, okay. we're five years old with this. Okay, but it came kind of after the Nikon and Canons, I guess. Well, of course, Canon had, Nikon have a long heritage in classical photography. Yes, we don't have that. And they are Japanese. As and well. so basically there's some kind of knowledge there that happens. Uh, basically the best cameras 
come from Japan. That's kind of like the rule now, no? I wouldn't go as far. No? Uh -huh. I wouldn't generalize so much. Okay. I would always say you cannot compare Apple with Pear. You cannot compare a 150 euro compact with 30,000 model middle format. You cannot compare all kinds of Japan to all kinds of not made in Japan. I don't think that's credible. Okay. And it would be unfair to some really nice camera manufacturers. All right, so there's a lot of technology goes in the lens and a lot of technology goes here. It's two different things, right? I mean, oh, it's even more than two different things. Yeah. A lot of technology goes into research of the imaging algorithms that actually form the picture. So photography in analog days was a lot of mechanics, was a lot of optics, a lot of physics. It's still a lot of opticals, a lot of mechanics, a lot of physics. But it has a lot of electronics now. It has a lot of informatics now. The world of photography changed ever since the first digital camera made their step into the world and changed dramatically with the digital camera revolution in the early 2000s, I would say. So yes, it's changing. And uh, it's pretty awesome because uh take pictures, take videos, and it stays forever. at exactly the same quality you took it. It's never going to de degrade. Uh, it's just awesome. Uh, of course. Uh, uh, the thing is what I love is that nowadays you have a tool to use for keeping your memories forever, as you said, and everyone can use it. That's what I love about digital photography. You don't need to be the mastermind. You don't need to study for very many years. You have a sophisticated product, but everyone can use it. And you can, you can grow in your own photography skills with the product you use, because it's been so easy. That's what I really appreciate about the forthcoming of digital life. Awesome. And uh, I love those 4K cam uh, screens. And now we need uh, GH. Um, I'm just going to say, you don't need to react. Uh, I think you're GH4. dreaming now, yeah. We need a GH4 that records 4K and a whole bunch of Panasonic 4K cameras. So I'm guessing the chip is being worked on and probably is ready, but it's waiting or something. And it's going to be awesome. 4K videos. I'm just saying. I think Nicola is dreaming a nice dream. And I'm just saying that Panasonic is here to make your life better and to make our whole world better. So I would really like to dream with you here. But as you said, I will not comment on that. But this is 4K pictures and more. So, so just all these pictures that come out, you put them on a 4K screen and you fall into It's awesome. It's, and uh, well, thanks a lot for showing this. Cool. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Of course, there's many, many more things to find out about GX7. So if you have the chance, go on the website. You can see the pictures of Thomas and Ian, the Magnum photographers, having tried it out. And you can find a lot more that we couldn't cover here. Cool. Yeah. Just find stuff to take pictures of. That's it.